So I want to actually discuss what's known as overlap layout consensus based assembly uh, strategies, which is basically a more modern approach to using overlap graphs to assemble contigs. And so in real life, you wouldn't kind of just use an overlap graph on its own, uh, mainly because for reasons we'll see in a second, it's, it's pretty messy and hard to interpret. And so something a little bit closer to a real world assembler, assembler that you might actually run is uh, what's called an overlap layout consensus assembly. And so the idea of the overlap layout consensus assembly is that there's three steps to it. The first of which is to build an overlap graph, which is what we've talked about uh, just now. Step two is uh, to perform what's called a layout. And so the idea is that you are taking the original overlap graph and you're simplifying it and identifying where unambiguously continuous DNA sequences are, uh, potential genomic sequences are, and where, for example, repetitive sequences might be because you've identified some cycles in the overlap graph or so on. And then the final step involves uh, estimating basically what's called the consensus sequence, so the most likely genomic sequence um, that you had uh, in the original genome before you did sequencing. And so in the layout step of the overlap layout uh, consensus approach is the goal of the step is to really clean up the overlap graph. And so here I'm showing you a hypothetical genome, uh, G A T T A C A C A G C G G, and I'm showing you the set of on the bottom of the slide the set of reads that you would get if you had reads of length five, um, and you had super high coverage. Uh, and so, in addition, because this is an overlap graph, I've defined um, the required minimum overlap to be three. And so, for example, you'll see an edge between the node represented by GATTA to the node represented by ATTAC because the last four bases of GATTA overlap the first four bases of ATTAC. And so, you know, this is basically the overlap graph that you get. And so the first step of the layer. And so one of the main ways that the layout approach cleans up this overlap graph is by removing what's called transitive relationships. And so if you consider the three nodes uh, that I've squared off in blue here, what you'll notice is that GATTA is followed by ATTAC, which is followed by TTACA. And so there's a corresponding edge going from GATTA to ATTAC, and another edge from ATTAC to TTACA. And now you'll notice that because these reads are all, you know, because these reads all have very, you know, pretty high overlap, you'll actually get an edge also from GATTA to TTACA. Right, and so this edge from GATTA to TTACA is what's called transitive because uh, it's in some sense implied by the edge going from GATTA to ATTAC and the edge from ATTAC to TTACA. And so in this layout approach, what you're doing is you're actually uh, removing these transitive relationships because they're kind of already implied. Um, by the rest of the graph. And so what you're seeing on the bottom half of this slide are all of the edges that are so-called transitive. So they're already implied by other edges in this overlap graph. And so what happens is when you remove those, you get a nice cleaned up uh, graph like this. Right, and so it, this cleaned up graph uh, makes your life easy because they allow you to identify contigs. So again, contigs is a you know common term in uh, when you're talking about genomes, and so contigs basically refers to like a contiguous or like one continu continuous chunk of DNA that is you know doesn't have any like gaps or there's no um, yeah there's no there's no gaps or or spaces or areas with a lot of unknown uh, genomic sequence in there that you haven't been able to assemble. And so uh, 
in this cleaned up overlap graph, I've basically identified for you two contigs uh, in this graph. And so contig one is represented by the first three nodes because uh, it's contiguous because there's only kind of arrows, there's only edges of the type going from node A to B and then from B to C. Um, I've also identified contig two, which is basically the end part of the assembly. Uh, because again, it's unambiguous in that ACACG is followed by CACGG. Um, what I've also labeled here is, so a contig in this overlap is, is more technically speaking, stretches of uh, paths through, through nodes. So path is basically just a sequence of, of nodes in this graph. So in this case, GATTA to ATTAC to TTACA is one path through three nodes. Um, and so contig is basically just a path where there's no branching happening. There's no, uh, we didn't have to make a choice as to whether, um, you know, if we're traveling from one node to another, there's no choice being made about which path should I take, right? And so you can see the node TTACA, which is the third from the left, uh, if you want to kind of walk along this graph to kind of walk along the genome, um, once you hit node TTACA, you have to make a choice as to do you follow the edge to TACAC or do you follow the longer edge to ACACG? And so that's why contig1 stops at TTACA. And so another important feature of this graph is that you actually see a loop, right? You see a cycle. Uh, if you look at the node representing the read ACACA, there's an edge to the node CACAC, and there's another edge going back to ACACA, which means there's like a loop there. And so that basically is suggestive of a repeat, so a repetitive sequence in that region of the genome. And so it's unresolvable because, again, um, there are many... Uh, repetitive sequences that could have been at that genomic location that would give rise to exactly the same overlap graph. And so um, in terms of genome annotation, you know, we would mark that region of the assembly as basically being an unresolvable repeat. And we would basically just return the two contigs on either side. And so finally, after you kind of built this, this you know, cleaned up layout uh, version of the overlap graph, the final step is to basically just actually pick a most likely nucleotide sequence for each contig of your assembly. And so again, um, I've mostly, up to this point, I've mostly kind of skipped over the, um, you know, how we deal with sequencing errors. But again, as I mentioned in some of the earlier slides, um, you can have, uh, you know, your overlap graph has to be able to deal with the fact that there are going to be sequencing errors in the reads. And so even if you have a bunch of reads originating from the same region of the genome, uh, they can have disagreement over, you know, random bases uh, just because of, for example, sequencing error. And so here I'm showing you an example of five reads that all more or less originate from the same region of uh, the original genome. And you can see highlighted in red, there are two regions that are um, discordant. And so the middle read, read number three from the top has two positions where you see a T and a C, uh, which disagree with the other reads at that particular position of the genome. And so uh, the approach, you know, any, assembly of this genome has to take into account the fact that not all the reads agree at every position. And so one of the most straightforward um, ways to kind of resolve these sequencing errors is say, okay, well, if I have five reads that overlap, uh, you know, this position in the genome, I'm going to take a look to see which base is called at that position uh, the most number of times, and I'm just going to use that as my final base that I put into the reference assembly. And so, for example, in the uh, C that's mismatched in the third, uh, the third read, uh, 
you can see that that column that rep represents that position of the genome uh, has a GGCGG, and so most of the reads think that there's a G there. And so the final assembly basically just takes what's called the majority vote or the consensus and just says, okay, there's probably a G there. And so that's basically the overlap layout consensus approach. Um, it's worth noting that um, in practice, these things aren't really used for large genomes because number one, building these graphs is slow. Um, number two, uh, the, the graphs are large in the sense that you have one node per read. And so if you're doing really deep sequencing, um, so if you have like, you know, hundreds of millions of reads in, in your particular experiment, then your these graphs get huge. And so kind of doing things like pruning these graphs, or even visualizing graphs uh, becomes very hard at, at that scale of data. And so um, the overlap Leo consensus approach is, is not particularly super well used today, but um, I'm presenting it here anyways, because it can, because it conceptually gives you a way of thinking about genome assemblies and and there and some form of this is is used in a lot of current assemblers. So two questions that I want you to think about are number one, what do you think is the effect of undetected sequencing errors on these overlap graphs? Or another way of thinking about this is, for example, suppose that you are sequencing a genome and there is one SNP that that individual is heterozygous for. What do you think the overlap graph would look like if you have an individual that is homozygous for that SNP or that is heterozygous for that SNP? How does it change the overlap graph? And the second question is, when we defined overlap, I basically said that in the overlap graph, you have one node for each read or each unique read uh, that you've sequenced and you draw an edge between those two reads. You draw an edge from read X to read Y if there's overlap between those two reads. And I said that you have to define how much overlap there has to be before you draw an edge, right? And so for example, typically you wouldn't draw an edge from read X to read Y if only the last base of read X matched the first base of read Y. You typically need more matches than that. And so that parameter, which we'll call L here, is something that you have to set before you make these overlap graphs. And so what kind of problems can you have when you make L too big or too small? How does that change the structure of your graph? 